Hello and welcome. My name is Mr. DeBellis and I will be your captain on this year's Voyage Through Science. I'd like to begin with a simple experiment you could do right from home or from this device. My mom is actually calling me right now. Hey mom, can I call you back in a second? I'm mid-shoot. I said I'm mid-shoot. Alright, love you too. Bye. You used to call me on my Where was I? I'd like to begin with an experiment that you could start right from home or on this device right here. Now, Wikipedia is the world's largest and most popular general reference work on the internet. It is also in the top 10 most popular websites on the entire planet. Now, thankfully, they're strictly non-for-profit, but why is this all important anyway? Tacos. That's why. I don't have any tacos, this is all I have. Tacos not only come in many forms, are very delicious, and have their own day of the week dedicated entirely to them, but it is the most random thing I could come up with. If I search taco in Wikipedia and click on the first hyperlink in its description, not in the parentheses, that's key, I end up on Mexican cuisine. Okay, let's do this again. I end up on Mesoamerican, again, region, again, geography, again, science, and then knowledge. Okay, what about a fidget spinner? Let's see, toy, play, psychology, behavior, organisms, biology, natural science, science, knowledge. Hmm, okay, what about rapper Lil Yachty? Surely he can't lead to, wait, stage name, pseudonym, name, term, words, linguistic, science, knowledge. What? How is that? Okay, hmm. Uh, dab. Minecraft? Four. Ice cream? Gangnam style? Leg warmers? Sticky note? The RMS Lusitania? Pugs? Okay, 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 okay. You get the point. Because of the Wikipedia Manual of Introduction writing style, the first hyperlink is almost always a broader subject of the term searched. Everything on Wikipedia ultimately leads to science and knowledge, or philosophy, a study of knowledge. The point is that science is everywhere. It's hard to do pretty much anything throughout the day without using or enjoying something that wasn't founded in science, or made better because of it. These are of course thanks to advancements and understandings in science. Alright, alright, alright. You don't have to be a geek to acknowledge that science is pretty awesome. A astounding, even. But why take the time to sit down and learn it? Why study science? The chances are you've never heard of a charlatan but you've come across hundreds of them in your life. If you've ever been to a circus, read the tabloids in the supermarket checkout aisle, or seen the movie The Prestige, you probably not only have a great taste in movies, by the way, but that's a personal note, but you have run into a charlatan. So what is a charlatan? A charlatan is a person falsely claiming to have a special knowledge or skill. In other words, a fraud. Neil deGrasse Tyson says, For me, science is vaccine against the charlatans. Mm. It enables you to know when someone is full of shit and when they're not. And that's power. That's power of protection for yourself. So you will not be exploited by those who do not have your best interests in mind. In other words, science equals knowledge and knowledge equals power. And by the communicative principle in algebra, which you'll learn soon, you're welcome, we can assume that science equals power. Thanks to various social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, oh, real nice. Your generation is in the know all the time. You are constantly exposed to a stream of information and expected to filter out the nonsense from the warm, meaningful, nudity center. Now, that's just the new standard, but 
Because of that, your generation will be the most informed and intellectual generation in the history of mankind. But don't learn science because you're afraid of being embarrassed on Facebook or fooled by a con man. Learn science because it upgrades your intellectual self. The truth is, science was the first subject humans ever knew. By observing and making sense of our surroundings, early humans tens of thousands of years ago learned to recognize patterns in the stars, helping to navigate the world and prepare for upcoming seasons. Without giving attention and note to our surroundings, we wouldn't be here today. You might even say that our ability to do science, that is, observe the universe, learn from it, bend it to our will, and communicate it, is what makes us, well, human. Generation after generation after generation, we've taught our youth the patterns we've learned about in the universe, passing on the torch of knowledge onto our kin of how everything else around us works, and how we can use that to our advantage to survive. Our ancestors have entrusted that we will use the knowledge they gathered as a means to help others and maintain viability in our species. You could almost say this acts like an empowering line of dominoes, each knowing it will eventually fall, but in the last effort communicates the message to the domino ahead. As one of the world's greatest thinkers Isaac Newton once said, if I have seen further than others, it is only by standing upon the shoulders of giants. In any science, we are examining the way the universe operates. In this particular class, we will be taking the magnifying glass and putting it to the universe's most complex creation. Life. The living environment. If you can understand the workings of this field, if you can recognize the patterns of life, if you are a well-practiced engineer and mechanic to your body, you can take great care of it and make it do incredible things. And that's power. Stephen Hawking once said, if you understand the way the world works, you control it in a way. But this isn't power like, take over the lands, enslave the enemy, burn their crops and supplies, or harness it for intergalactic domination of alien races. It's the type of power to allow the capability of creating a better world with better technologies. But technology is often a word that's misunderstood. Now, when you think of technology, you might think of Fitbits, laptops, iPhones, or the new Beats by Dre. Sorry. But really, technology is anything that's an extension of the self to make a task easier. Everything from your smartphone to a drinking straw, antibiotics to an umbrella, a number two pencil to crutches, toilet paper, sneakers, these are all things that make our lives easier, and these are all solutions to problems brought about by everyday life. If life is a game of Super Smash Bros, then science is the hammer. It just makes everything easier. Oh no! Now I could give you the whole, with great power comes great responsibility speech, great power comes great responsibility. But other than the fact that you are all not Spider-Man or Spider-Woman, that I know of, you shouldn't think of inheriting the Earth as a huge chore or task. Think of it as being handed a baton in a relay race tens of thousands of years long. Now, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. At the end of this course, there is a big test called the Regis Exam. And for some of you, that might be enough motivation to get through the course, and that is perfectly okay. But for others, you are the hungry ones, the ones who hate to settle, the ones who despise comfort. You are the ones who see the flaws in something and want to make it better. You are the ones who are the catalysts for change, the ones to make the world a better place. You are the problem solvers, the thinkers, the ones who won't go down without a fight. You may not realize it yet, but you are the next generation. This will eventually be your planet, your Earth, your floating rock in the vastness of the universe. How will you solve the world's problems? How will you protect it? What will you do with the tools given to you?
The torch of humanity is being passed down to you all. Will you take it?